5.30. Took me about an hour and a half to get a hike from the truck and get up in here and get the stand on and the camera gear up. I'm back in the spot where I sat the other day. Well, in the general area, the big bedding area that I sat on the other day. I'm just on the north end of it. Um, and it's about a couple hundred yards just to the south here. Got a big river crossing right over here, about a hundred yards. And a ridge point that comes off of several fields. Dumps down right in here. Years past, there's always been a lot of scrapes and rubs down in here. Um, and those big rubs I found the other day in those scrapes were just a couple hundred yards to the south. When I peeked up in here, out from the riverbed, I seen some eyeballs at the base of the big ridge over here. I just kept my beam low and uh, hurried up and picked the tree and uh, got up the tree nice and quietly. Got a nice uh, 10 to 15 mile an hour south wind right in my face, going right down the river corridor. So hopefully most of our action will be right in front of us coming off of the ridge across the river or out of the bedding area. Anyway, it's getting gray light now. I'm going to go ahead and shut up and uh, wait on the deer. This segment has been brought to you by Lone Wolf Tree Stands, your silent partner. I think I was pretty far back, but he is kind of quartering a little bit away. I was about to, with the way my camera arm was, it was kind of cockeyed in the tree. since I shot and I've been looking over there this whole way and this whole time and I haven't seen anything moving through there I'm so nervous about it but I'm gonna climb down and look at the arrow and go from there well uh, Jacob and I are uh, creeping back in here to see if we can find the buck I shot this morning and last had the uh, blood there at 80 yards from impact decided to back out but uh decided with the south wind and um, wanted to give them as much time as possible which it's been like seven hours to, to come at it from the south since he was downwind of me uh, last time or uh, where the trail ended so we decided to uh, get downwind of him and get up on this big oak ridge which is actually 
that peak right over there um, and scan down there uh, the river bottom where I last uh, had blood and see if first we can find this body. Um, otherwise we'll get back down in there and uh, get get on the uh, blood hopefully again where I last had blood. Just decided to back out with that, that thicket starting and I'm pretty much walking with my wind at my back so I wanted to give them as much time as possible and I think, uh, I think we definitely done that. So color looks good and um, definitely the uh, right amount of it hopefully so we're gonna get back up in here and uh, take it a step at a time and hopefully we'll, we'll find them. just on the other side of it. And he was moving this way. This way. He was moving I'm, straight I'm towards pretty it. Sure. This way. Okay, somewhere yeah. this way. Yes. Yes. So he could have either jailed on up into this swampy stuff. Or he could have just stayed just jay hooked a little bit towards the, the north there and uh, continued that way. You know what I mean? I don't know if you need it. That's what the arrow tells us. Dark blood. Um, but the blood we're finding was a little light. It's just right up this trail. What, what do you think that is? Maybe 50 yards to the toilet paper? Yeah, so we, we aren't very far on the trail at but all. But that's some pretty good colored blood up there. Yeah. And a good amount of it. However, it just went to nothing. Well, we're just so. going to have to jump ahead. Pretty much, right? Yep. Just start skipping along, getting, staying on the trails. Yep.
sure he is on his last leg anyway. Holy oh, cow. I'm just glad he didn't get up and run off. Did you hit him right where you need, need to? I think I need it. I think I did. Okay. Got one more left, but hey, he's toast, bud. And he's a giant. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've never been so racked and not had a bug. <laughs> Well, here he is. Uh, we decided to, to leave him hanging last night. We got him up in the tree a little bit and got him covered up. Uh, since we're so far back here, we decided it was just probably easier uh, to get the canoe in here this morning and uh, float him out. We would have been in here more than likely till early this morning getting him out if we uh, would have tried last night. It was plenty cool, so we uh, felt pretty good about it. But uh, just... Uh, culmination of a lot of hard work man it uh you sit there in the stand you know all year long waiting on a moment like this and you're just thinking to yourself is it even worth the the long hours in the stand and all the scouting from summer to uh you know end season scouting man it's just it's an overwhelming feeling when it finally happens and it's just it's truly amazing man just tons and tons of hard work man from uh like i said coming out here in the summer and fighting the mosquitoes trying to you know uh film some deer in their summer patterns and find out where these big boys are living and and the does but uh just another success uh, success story of staying mobile and um you know hunting your strengths and just sticking with the hot sign I actually uh, I came up into this bedding area, um, what was it, three days ago, and uh, I noticed several, several scrapes, um, you know, that were popped up, and uh, I mean, they were just wide open, and I came across uh, two or three just ginormous rubs, and uh, when I was uh, crossing the river on the way out, I noticed uh, even more does coming up into this bedding area. So I decided uh, with the south wind yesterday that uh, I need to get up into this pinch and be, be able to hunt the crossing and the downwind side of uh, that bedding area, right where those does crossed the other day. And man, it was, a, it was a trek in here. I think it took me two hours from leaving the parking lot to getting across the river and up the tree and getting all the camera gear set up. But, Man, it was well worth it. I got in there and I didn't have to wait long. Uh, caught one doe slipping in there into the bedding area. And she was moving kind of quick, looking like she might've had something behind her. And sure enough, man, uh, this dude, I caught him slipping out of there, uh, heading back towards the river. And uh, as you can tell in the video, I, I shot him a grunt and just turned him on a dime. The shot, uh, shot was definitely uh, marginal at, at best but uh, we gave him plenty of time I, I think uh, I waited two hours before I even was ready to climb down out of the tree and blood trailed him for a good 30 minutes you know up to about 80 yards and I just wanted to back out of there I didn't want to push him and um, so I went back to the truck and waited on Jacob and we took the long way in there and uh, glass glass down into that river bottom off of the the oak ridges uh, just adjacent to there and just could not uh, find a body so i was like well let's go down to last blood and go from there and uh, we went down the last blood and we actually noticed him he was still alive uh, in, in the thicket right where i i ended at and uh, he was just on his last leg even after eight hours so i put another arrow in him and uh, put him out of his misery but it was just an awesome, awesome, epic hunt.
When it comes to food plots, we're really looking for three different things. Attractiveness, longevity, and herd health. The Real World Gen 2 soybeans have four different varieties in this bag. They are the most shatter resistant soybeans on the market, which means these soybeans are going to last you all the way through season and a lot of times well after. They also have a higher oil content, which is going to make them a lot more attractive than most of your other soybeans out there. Having four different varieties of soybeans in this bag, we're going to have four different maturity rates. The soybeans are packed full of protein, which is going to help our herd health and they're going to last all the way through season, all the way after season, especially in those harsher conditions and definitely provide not only for the deer, but all wildlife. They also offer a northern blend of soybeans for you guys that are in the northern states. And there's three different varieties of soybeans and those also the most shatter resistant soybeans on the market. If you want to learn more on the Real World Gen 2 soybeans or the northern blend soybeans, check out their website at realworldwildlifeproducts.com or find the dealer nearest you.